Well, mind-body medicine is a, a modern name for what used to be called psychosomatic medicine. And what it signifies is our understanding of the complete interpenetration of mind and body and of the possibility of entering into a therapeutic or creative conversation in which all aspects of the mind and body can speak with one another and can promote healing. This understanding is the fundamental understanding of how human beings operate and how if we're trying to help them to heal themselves, we have to work with them. The problem is that we lost sight of it. And beginning probably in the 16th century, 17th century with Descartes being a critical and uh, Bacon, Francis Bacon being an, another, we began to separate the mind from the body and to see the, and believe th that they were different, that the mind went with the spirit and that the body was somehow separate and the body became the, the concern of doctors, of secular doctors, and the mind and the spirit was the concern of the priests and of the clergy and the different faiths. And it's beginning in the really mid to late 19th century, the great pioneers in psychosomatic medicine and physiology and psychiatry began to say, uh, wait a minute, you know, that separation is a false separation. We need to look at the whole human being. The, the larger, larger way of looking at it, of course, is, is it's not just mind and body. It's relating to the spiritual, relating to the environmental, the social, the familial, that it's all connected. And in the individual, it's mediated through this co coherent, uh, completely interconnected mind-body that, that we call a human being. And the emphasis there is how you can use that understanding of the connection between mind and body and all the many techniques that are subsumed under that hyphenated mind-body word to heal yourself of depression. And those techniques include different forms of meditation, guided imagery, biofeedback, uh, self-expression and words, drawings and movement, uh, written exercises, all of these different ways of accessing and using this mind-body connection. We've been seeing the limits of what we've been doing therapeutically for the problems that we have, whether it's anxiety and depression, or cardiovascular disease, or cancer pain, or uh, diabetes. We've been seeing that the conventional therapies that we have been using uh, have significant limitations, and that they have bring with them significant side effects. So, people like me and you know, many, many people began to just look around. What else is there available? And we began also to have the idea uh, to, to become aware of the fact that self-care, it's not just the techniques, but the fact of using them ourselves is of fundamental importance. And that focus on self-care it comes partly out of the uh, limitations of therapies or medical interventions that are done by physicians or nurse practitioners or people like that, but it also comes out of the understanding that we have a very great capacity to do things on our own behalf. I started doing taking yoga lessons 45 years ago, and it would seem pretty weird to people. Justice meditation seemed pretty weird to most people at that point. It was, well, you know, what are you doing that for? And what does that have to do with psychiatry or medicine? And it was very clear to me at the beginning that these were very powerful ways to change my mind and improve the way my body was functioning. There is, I think, much more stress. I see much more stress in young people than when I was growing up for various, I mean, I remember being a kid and, and we had one kid in the class 
maybe two over the years who had a hard time sitting still out of 20, 25, something like that. Now, you know, a third or half the kids in some of these grade school classes are being medicated. And they didn't, I mean, they did fine. They're both great students as it happened, but they just moved around the law. And, they, you know, that's Billy. That's what he's doing. And so there's that. There is something going on, biological, psychological, mind the body. And then the, what's happening is that our response to all of this has been outrageous. We've been drugging the whole population. In some college classes, uh, freshman classes, up to 50% of the kids are on one or another kind of psychotropic medication. So the stress that's there, which I do believe has increased significantly, uh, is also being the attempt is being made to suppress the stress using drugs. And there's so much of that going on, and people are saying, well, it's not really working all that well, and I'm having some side effects. Let me see if there's some other way. So in a sense, going so far in that pharmacological direction is producing a reaction. And I think the same is true with type 2 diabetes and with cardiovascular disease and treatment of pain, addiction, all these other things where we've just gone so deep into that biomedical woods that we're beginning to come out of it and look for look for a different way. And it's it's got to be it just it's sort of like well when all else fails we have to take it into our own hands because it's clearly we, we've had a great faith in the in, in medical experts and to be sure if i get hit by a truck i want those experts working on me or if i have an overwhelming infection or some you know diagnostic you know improbability that's happening but for most of the things that most of us have most of the time it just simply hasn't worked so well so we're, we're realizing that we're waking up to it and the next step for us as a society is to make self-care the true primary care that's what has to happen that's the only way the shift is going to come as if we really go from a medical system which depends on the authorities and that they're in charge of everything and then that model of giving yourself over to authority is the model that governs all care not just emergency care or care of an overwhelming illness where you really need it but the care of chronic illnesses where it doesn't work so well that that's what has to change so you ask me where is it going I'm saying it's got to go in this direction because otherwise we're going to keep on getting sicker and sicker uh, and we're going to be bankrupt because this this way isn't working it keeps on costing us more money and it's not helping us to heal ourselves and then when you go into a, a clinic or you go see your doctor and you have somewhat elevated blood pressure the first thing you know he 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 or she should should not be doing is reaching for the prescription pad primary care physicians start writing a prescription 2 minutes after somebody talks about being depressed and 90% of the people who are depressed or perhaps more don't need medication they do need meditation they do need changes in diet they do need exercise they do need group support so it's got to be this whole model it's like we have to turn it upside down and inside out what we're doing now and that will come as people demand it and it will come as health professionals are trained to do it because if they're not trained and, and also as my friend Dean Ornish always says, and when they're reimbursed for doing it too, and it's true. If you're reimbursed for spending 40 minutes with somebody at the same rate that you are for doing a colonoscopy, you're going to, well, why not spend 40 minutes with them? Maybe it'll help. We have to change the whole, the whole way of doing things. 